Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. September 13th, just got done with our watermelon season. Just got done packing the last few buses. Uh, Brooks has been running the combine while I've been in the melons, so I'm coming to try to kick him out of the combine and take over my job that I usually do this time of the year. We've got a lot of corn left to do. If everything goes right and the fall allows us, you know, good weather, we should get done by Halloween. All right, I'm gonna kick this guy out of this combine, so see you guys in there. Last but not least, once your corn knee high by July, better get the plant, boys. I make my living off the land. We're definitely gonna get rowdy this year. With aching back and callous pain. I'd like to say that this season's gonna be better. Old men said you reap what you sow. If you're gonna do something, be the best you can be at it. Out here in these fields of gold. It's hard out here. Always bringing heat. We in Alabama. I'm an early riser, no nighter. They call me Clown Boy, yeah. I'm a fighter. Ain't gonna stop till they put me in my grave. We're coming back a little harder this year. I'm a So yeah, this year we're running a 780. Last year uh, we had a 670. We actually got some copperhead concaves for this combine. Hopefully midweek, we're supposed to be getting some rain. We'll shut down, put those copperheads in and have a pretty good comparison. So we're excited for that. One of our biggest challenges this year, as I mentioned last time you guys were out, was a disease. In gray leaf spot, we had gray leaf early this year. Um, this is a second year in a row I've been seeing tar spot. This field, it's, it's really not bad. I mean, you, you see it in some leaves and in some leaves you don't. You know, it's all about kernel depth. And I can't say that this is the best kernel depth I've seen, but it, it's not horrible. field, getting the crops out of the field. Happy to harvest them, but I can't wait till I work the ground. That's my favorite part. Hopefully this year we can beat the old uh, Kevin Cowb. If this field right here had Kevin Cowb's special ingredients, chicken litter, maybe we can win it, but Kevin's stealing it all. My dad today is doing absolutely nothing which is most of the days, and sometimes you just drive semi, but he ain't even doing a whole lot this year. It'll be a good two months before we get all corn and beans out of the ground. We got a good while before we can go off and screw around and have fun in the winter time. clean all the equipment up, and then I'm going, I'm going duck hunting. So let them do the rest of the work.
So yeah, the fun part's over with. Now we're just waiting on the calculations. You know, we'll see. See where we're at. So we got our, you know, our gross weight, our tear, and then our moisture. Check out these kernels. You know, it's all about kernel size. It's close to hanging over the sides. Like Kevin always tells me, you're so close. Feeling good. The field's been good, it looked good. I mean, I knew it was gonna be good corn. Wasn't that optimistic, but it turned out good. So it was a long day. These things take a lot of time. Our main thing is we've got a good average. Um, we're making money, our ROI looks good, so that's number one, so I'm tickled to death. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. Uh, we've been using BASF. We've really fell in love with the Veltima. We recommend BASF. It lasts longer and works harder to make sure that they are covered from head to toe. So today is the 14th of September. We're down here looking at our one of our Mac field plots, actually. This here is, I think we're in the one that has no end furrow, but it has a two by two program. Just seeing how far along we are, take a look at some of the ears. You don't see the even ear sets. You know, we had really good emergence, even emergence this year, but uh, when the corn got up to about V2, we got like 14, 15 inches of rain the next three weeks. Some spots dried out a little bit in a row and some got behind, but the neat thing is even with the uneven ear placements here, still pretty consistent ear size, which we normally, you don't see with that. I mean, you know, you grab that, that's a pretty damn big ear there. Pretty heavy. See a little bit of dent, but like I said, this is just a, you know, listen here, don't have much dent on it. This don't have our in furrow program, but we'll take a look at the, but you can kind of see we're still, still got milk line. Hell, that one's only halfway down there, but some of them are, are three quarter of the way down. So uh, pretty pleasant with them, not huge kernels, but, uh, but like I said, we're making more, more kernels on our ears than what we normally have. That was 18 around and Oh, I'm guessing we're probably 30, 38 long, 36 long maybe. So we're kind of hoping that the, the extra kernels that we have makes up for, for a little bit of lack of the kernel depth. There's where we make our bushels up, right there, fellas. You know, even though they're different heights, they're still consistently sized ears. Not too much den in it. And this is just our plot. This is not our high yield field, but I still, if I had to guess, this, this strip through here is still gonna be 300 plus bushel corn right through here. Here's actually where our full blown Mac program is. But if we, we don't have to shuck them all back, but we can just count the consistency. You know, we pulled some of these in our Mac group ears here, but you know, so I don't know, we just went 200 ears in here and we can't find a, a blunt ear. So that's, uh, that's what we want to talk about consistency. You know, here, I'm betting there's probably, this is probably 350 bushel corn right through here. So it should be, should be pretty good corn. This hybrid here that we're going to after what I've seen out of it, I kind of wish we would have planted it down here where we could have managed it a little bit better. 
Problem is I'm kind of concerned on the stock integrity on this because it's kind of built for one thing and one thing only. And that's why I wish we had had it home where we wouldn't, where we could have managed it a little bit better. It's probably going to be the hybrid that we're going to have down here next year. This is the donkey field. Dan, you like that girth? <laughs> 45,000 of them. That ain't gonna be too bad. Brooks, hate to tell you this, bud, but... This might be the cardinal killer field. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, shouldn't say that until shouldn't it goes to the monitor, that's for damn sure. Not gonna give you the crown, how about that? You're gonna have to earn it. Yeah, this is, this is what's disheartening. Like I said, you see this purpling. I think we could have easily add another 20, 30 bushel to it, but it just, you know, ran out of, ran out of moisture. Like I said, more and more I think about it, I think all these purpling stalks here are the ones that were loaded with the physoderma. I think we planted way too thick. I think this hybrid here, I think because seeing some of them big ears where it had a little bit of moisture, I think it has tremendous flex. So I think maybe next year we might play around with that down there at Crossroads at about 34, 35,000 and, and see what it would do. Absolutely. You know, we dropped all, a lot of the leaves have dropped here, but you can imagine, you know, all these leaves sticking out, how hot it had to get at night. That would be a big thing to help the cooling. Uh, this hybrid here, I, I got big, big ideas for him next couple years. He could be the, the stud that whips on 6744 on our farm. Anyway, guys, we're gonna head out and me and Nate and Jared, Sean, we're probably gonna go drink a beer. <laughs> or at least the eyeball. <laughs> See you guys. The best part of being in the MAC group for me is that I'm able to surround myself with people I want to be like. So other high yielders, people that are striving to do better. Some of the shortcuts, Kevin's kind of given us some guidelines along tissue test levels, soil test levels. Just really giving you a road map on what to look for. We're looking to bust through yield plateaus. We've never had a corn crop that's as green as it is now from top to bottom. I mean, that speaks for itself. doing a lot of different trials and one of them is Concept Agritech. We're doing a in-furrow starter trial. The thing I'm the most excited to try is a bunch of bugs. It's a biological. We're excited to see how they work out. Yeah, today's uh, September 24th. We're right here at the home farm. We're gonna go look at some pivot bio corn and maybe some good corn that blown over, I guess. Yeah, so since planting, I mean, you know, we were dry at planting. You know, things came up good. Um, we did get a cold spell and a frost, but it just burned some leaves, which obviously still will affect the yield a little bit, but no big deal. August hit, and up to now, I mean, we just got our first rain in 45 or 50 days, which is no big deal. I'm not saying that's a big deal compared to all those guys out in North Dakota, so don't, yeah, don't even, I don't even want to hear it. Yeah, the corn, I don't know, the corn got blown over. Again, shocker. Looks like Brooks might have us this year again. there's nothing special about this corn. Uh, we side dressed it and as soon as he left the field they got 10 inches of rain over the next 36 hours so I don't care if you cultured, wide dropped, spread, uh, that helps nobody that amount of rain. Yeah the corn's pretty yellow, um, the corn sucks. This is irrigated corn. It's, this field typically averages 230 across everything, dry land corners everything. Hopefully it makes 180 this year. Uh, we have a Pivot Bio 40 trial. Yeah, so we're gonna go pull a bunch of ears. Uh, like here, it looks like the corn will make 200 bushel, but still, it ain't gonna be enough to pay, but makes you feel better. Yeah, I mean, I guess the kernel depth, I mean, it's not terrible here. Like I said, I hope it makes 200 bushel would be nice. I mean, you were watching, I pulled all these ears consecutively, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, I think out of all these, there might be one or two dinks. 
Not good corn, but at least it's all consistent. <laughs> Look at that nice one, huh? That one looked good. <laughs> Watch out, Kevin. Coming for you. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's 15 consecutive ones there where there's a stretch, no gaps in the plants, nothing. As you can see, the tar spot really took care of business here. What looks different to me here already is the kernels. They just look, I don't know, fatter, or I don't know, however you want to say it. I want to walk in. This Now this would be, this would be Pivot Bio 40, uh, minus 35 pounds side dress. All we're hoping for here is for the corn to be same. Couldn't even be a bushel less. Still pays for itself. Still makes you money. We'll walk out a few rows here. Pick the spot, no gaps, everything's the same. So I think there's a couple dinks in here, so. I mean, it looks like the pollination was fine but the girth and maybe the rows around were affected. And obviously, you know, when you can wiggle the rows like that, it usually isn't a good thing. Try to learn something from each field, and I guess this is our one thing to learn this year. <laughs> I think we see more consistency. This one, so this one here is, uh, let's see, this would be 250 pounds of nitrogen. No pivot bio. This one would be 250 pounds of nitrogen with pivot bio 40. This one would be 200 and, what did we say, 215 pounds? Yep. 215 pounds a set of nitrogen with pivot bio 40. I think what we're seeing here is, I think we're seeing maybe a couple less in length, maybe a couple less round. Here, I think we're getting more consistent ears. And here, yeah, I mean, you have a dink here. You're getting consistent. Yeah, you have a couple big ones. Remember, you're getting two big ones because you got a small one here now, too. You got a dink. And so, but we're still getting decent consistency. Our main goal is we want to run with this. This one needs to run with this one. You still come out ahead with Pivot Bio 40. So, cut back your end. You know, you're, you're saving seven bucks an acre here. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. Here at Advanced Shield, we're not only just a consulting company, we are now offering a full lineup of select crop inputs. There's no middleman for the farmer, by a farmer. Unleash your crop's potential. Visit online or give me a call today. Ran the Copperhead Pearl Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. There's patches of this, so. A storm came through, and obviously, you know, Kevin Cobb will have a blast with this one again. <laughs> If I would have planted the wings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, they're nice heavy ears on them, so. I mean, the kernel depth's pretty good. This corn looks like it's still, it's still moving, so it does not look like it's dead. We found, oh, six, seven acres we can weigh off from. Grain quality looks good. We'll see how it does. I, I have no guesses. I'm not gonna pull many back in a row, but here you can see a few. I mean, it's just one right after another. Standing right now, this is 42,000. I think I might have overdid it on my last foliar pass. As you can tell, I mean, the corn's still healthy. If I had to do it over, I probably would have took, I wouldn't have took nutrients out, but I would have lowered the rates a little bit. But, oh well, I guess that's how you learn. Yeah, it's basically ready. Our last tissue sample, the nitrogen was 
and the potassium was 2.5 or 2.6. Pretty happy about that. I don't know how this looks to some of the other guys' corn, but it's gotta be right there. It's gotta be right there. I mean, it, to me, for me, of corn that I've personally walked, and yeah, it's gonna sound bad because this is my own, but this is probably the second best corn I've ever seen behind one other guy. <laughs> probably not gonna beat his. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely won't beat the corn that I saw last or two years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't pull many out here because this goes into my 10 acres here. <laughs> yeah, this one now. This, yeah, this one goes into my 10. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, we'll see. So I think we're actually gonna start from our outside. We're gonna count the one row we go down, then we skip 36 rows, and then go down. We'll go down on that, the middle pass first, cause that's not quite as far down. We'll try to get as much good corn out of that standing as well we can, then we'll fold back up, come over and dump, and then whatever we need okay. left over then. We're getting ready to pull a uh, hopefully a good NCGA. Uh, this was kind of the field that we pushed as hard as what we could. Stuck it through a lot of trials. And we're just kind of hoping that, you know, that's going to translate into a, a pretty good pull today. Plus you're monitored throughout the whole season. Each week you pull it, you're, we're seeing those numbers going up or down or where they're at. And uh, I mean, that's how we're going to learn to get to the next level is monitoring those nutrients at the right levels during that growth stage and all of that plays together with uh, high yield. I mean, it just, it does. Hey, these ears are pretty high, ain't they? They are pretty high. Well, you won't have to run your snout on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> So pretty, you know, not the biggest kernels we ever had, but I wouldn't be afraid to say that they're heaviest that we've ever had. You know, they're pretty, pretty good sized kernels there. I don't know, combine will tell us what it'll do. People don't understand and realize how hard it is. You know, we, you know, back in 2013, we had a perfect growing year. Really didn't do much management, you know, that's how, how much Mother Nature plays into these uh, yields that, you know, we didn't do hardly anything and we grew 374 that year. Well, now that we've been getting fine-tuned and working on tissue samples and Mother Nature's kind of not been working with us very well, but, you know, that was 13, 374, and we still have not hit 400 in, what, seven, eight years? So it's tough. So that's why we're here to try it again, you know. Next week on Corn Warriors. Yeah, I'm losing power. What the hell? Mother Nature treated us very kindly this year. You got to find some love somewhere because it ain't in this cornfield.